Blog Talk Radio. You're tuned in to Fire, the Gospel Experience. to fire the gospel experience that is dedicated to honoring the only true and only living creator God. There is no other God. Praise the Lord. I'm that living witness. And now is the time, beloved, to let your mind, body, and souls be refreshed in our relationship with our heavenly creator, almighty God, and his precious, beautiful son, and our savior, Jesus the Christ, right here on Fire the Gospel Experience. Jesus the Christ is unashamedly declared with no apology to be the only true savior, the only lamb of God, the only redeemer for man's souls. Amen goes right there. Praise the Lord. I'm your purpose and power-driven host, Ryan E. Jefferson. Here to bring you the most uplifting spiritual motivation, as well as some of the most anointed gospel music that has ever been made and that has ever been played. Fire is the broadcast that will light, ignite, and fan those flames that's in your spirit, man, woman, boy, and girl, so that you can be that victorious believer in Jesus Christ. Amen. I said in Jesus Christ. That means you've got to surrender your mind, your body, and soul. The Bible tells us in Romans, I believe it's the ninth chapter, it says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thine heart, the Lord Jesus has been raised from the dead. If you believe that and give your heart, your mind, and your soul to Jesus Christ, you're already saved. And then go find your church somewhere and let the preacher baptize you in water as an outward show of what has already happened internally, that you are born brand new. Coming up out of the water just like you came out of your mother's womb, a brand new babe in Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
I am always happy and excited to be here with you for another spiritual journey, which is fire, the gospel experience. We call that evangelistic outreach, motivation, spiritual radio ministry right here, lifting up our God, because we're living in the last and evil days. I don't think nobody, whether you go to church or not, has a problem in understanding that there is something severely going wrong in our days and time. We're seeing things happening now that we never even dreamed of that would be happening. And to our shock and surprise, some of this stuff is even being legalized. What? Are you kidding me? So we know that we need a power, a person, a God to come in and help us find our way and sort our way through. God gives us holy word to be our written guide, and Holy Spirit God is our comforter to be our resident guide. We will be embracing First Corinthians. 4 and 16 on this spiritual walk that is by the gospel experience where the apostle Paul has to set the record straight with those Corinthian believers and us as well about spiritual arrogance. That's right. <laughs> we may be at times insensitive to others as we and are still growing in Christ. We're still growing, okay? Some of us been in the church for years and years and years, and we're still growing. It don't matter. It's not like we've arrived. Apostle Paul said himself, and he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. He said that I have not arrived. He said I press on to obtain that wonderful prize that is Jesus the Christ. Amen. So it, it's all about us. Being meek and humble in our hearts, that we would seek to be more like our Lord Jesus Christ and then serve others with the gifts and the calling and the talents that we have. So we're going to be talking about don't fake, imitate. Do what you got to do to strive to be more like our Lord Jesus who came, taught, he ministered, he demonstrated, he did miracles and wonders so much so that the Bible at the end of the book of Revelation said there are many, many more miracles that our Lord Jesus did that if it was recorded, it would fill all, all of the books in the world. Now, that's a lot of miracles. Amen. So, listen, my special guests are on the way. We are in for another good, spiritual, uplifting, motivating time, as always here. So, why don't you call those neighbors? Why don't you call a family member? Why don't you call some folks that you know could use some good spiritual motivation right now? Let them know that your brother, your friend, your cousin, your uncle in Christ, Jesus, Ron E. Jefferson is back on the Internet to encourage you all to look to the hills which come your strength. Talking about our God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for overseeing this wonderful Fire Gospel Experience ministry. I pray that you bless this time that we have together. Bless my special guests as they speak words of power, encouragement, and motivation for our hearts to be blessed by. And thank you most of all for lighting the fuse that's going to set the internet and the radio airwaves on Holy Ghost sanctified fire. Thank you, Lord. Bless your holy name, God. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We sanctify your name.
brand new day. Gotta take some time to renew my faith. Cause the pain is saying opposite of what the Bible says in the book of James. The proud faith shall save the sick. The Lord will raise them up once again. Yeah, that encourages me to praise Him along the way. The gospel explosion where the praises are going up and the worries are going away. Playing for you the best and the newest gospel music on the planet and the most inspiring encouragement under God's heaven. Keep tuning in and bless your family, your friends, and your co-workers by telling them about fire. I guess you didn't know I built my house on a rock, it won't be falling when the rain comes. Uh, 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 uh. I guess you didn't know I built my house on a rock, it won't be falling when the rain comes. Uh, 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 uh. Guess you didn't know I built my house upon a rock, it won't be falling when the rain comes. Uh, 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 uh. Guess you didn't know I built my house upon a rock, it won't be falling when the rain comes. Coming with this trial and that trial Trying to get me down just like in every situation You ought to know by now who you're messing with You fight against God's people, you're persecuting Jesus Me and my house, we will serve the Lord As for me and my house, we'll be doers of the word But you still come knocking, you still come trying You still come talking and you still come lying I guess you didn't know I built my house on a rock It won't be falling when the rain's coming I guess you didn't know I built my house on a rock It won't be falling when the rain's coming I guess you didn't know I built my house on a rock It won't be falling when the rain's coming Yes, you didn't know I built my house upon a rock It won't be falling when the rain's coming When the rain's coming 
Jesus told me about my house, if it's built on sand, the wind will knock it down when the storm come raging. The storm comes to everyone, no difference, but if it stands or falls, it's all in the foundation. The windows rattle, the waves will beat, my foundation's made of rock, no harm comes to me. The wind will batter and the house will shake, I'll be free inside, no head I guess you didn't know I built my house on a rock, it won't be falling when the rain comes in. I guess you didn't know I built my house on a rock, it won't be falling when the rain comes in. Guess you didn't know. I build my house upon a rock It won't be falling When the rains come in When the rains come in Gospel artist Laura Bushi here on Fire the Gospel Experience, letting us know that God, that our Lord Jesus is that rock, that firm foundation. He is that chief cornerstone that the builders rejected. Now he has become the whole anchor for our faith and our foundation. We started this Fire Gospel Experience all patiently praising God with gospel artist Fred Jerkins, accompanied by Lau Pie. Let you know that it doesn't matter Pray my prayer, I'll make it known to God Like the Bible says, let your request be made known unto God I'll do that And in the meantime, I'm not going to sit up and wait and moan and pout While I'm waiting, like I'm twiddling my thumbs mad at God Because he ain't moving fast enough I'm going to be praising you, God (laughs) While I'm waiting And guess what? I'm going to be staying busy too We're going to be talking about what it means as we interact with other believers in the body of Christ. Yes, we have a ministry that is sevenfold. We have so many things to do. Yes, we're called to commission and evangelize the lost, to reach out to the law. But also the Apostle Paul let us know that sometimes members in the body can get things twisted, and we need to be able to discern what's right and what's wrong. And sometimes it calls for some correction, some exhortation, and some rebuking. And it, it, it just takes some straightening out. We're a family. What family you know haven't had their disagreements, debates, and even arguments? But guess what? Ain't nobody going to fall out to the point where we're going to disown somebody. We're not going to act like we don't still love them. And when I'm talking about love, I'm not always talking about that emotional feeling that we get the warm and fuzzy uh, description for love, which is a Western, uh, very limited description of the word love. But if you study your Bible, and I know you some Bible scholars out there, we understand that Agape love is a verb. It's not uh, an affectionate term. It's not an emotion. How you going to feel warm and fuzzy about your enemy when he needs to be fed, when he needs to be given something to drink? It's a commitment to do good for somebody else regardless of how they may feel about you. Amen. And that takes God. You know it does because y'all know how we are. We are called into this ministry to go above and beyond what sometimes we receive from others. Amen. And yes, 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 Freddie Renee, I promise you, we do need you, Lord. Yes, we need you. We need you to help us do those things that we could never do on our own. And faking it till we make it just ain't gonna cut it. Lord, help us.
solid rock that's consistent. Can solve a problem in an instant. Lord, I love you. Can't live without you. Lord, I need you. I need you in my life. The Lord is my shepherd, and then now and after, a solid rock that's consistent, to solve a problem in my sense. I found in life that God is a must, for He This is the new fire broadcast. How many want their lights to be fired? God can light your fire. I'm tuning in. My name is Latrice Lawrence, National Gospel Recording Artist and Songwriter. Tune in to the new fire broadcast. Give me 
Amen, amen, amen. Goes right there. Sounds of gospel artist Latrice Lawrence with Give Me Peace as we just enter into the presence of our God, not seeking to rush in, not stumbling in, not out of breath from the last detail of our to-do list and then trying to give God our leftover time. No, we're giving him the first fruits of our praise. We are giving him the first fruit of our tithes, our offering. We're giving him the first fruit of our energy, of our thoughts, and our commitment to him comes first and foremost above all those other things. Thank you, Latrice Lawrence. We are just behind the veil right here on Fire the Gospel Experience. Freddie Renee letting us know that I need you. That's my homegirl from Detroit. Just giving you some real solemn serenity gospel music where you can get all different blends of gospel music on this radio ministry, which is here to uplift our God as well as encourage you because I have been greatly encouraged by your love and your support for this radio ministry. We are embracing the thought, don't fake, imitate from 1 Corinthians 4 and 16, which simply says, therefore, I urge you, this is Paul speaking. Um, maybe when I grow up and I'll be like Paul, I'll be able to speak like this too. But right now, the Apostle Paul is saying, therefore, I urge you to imitate me. Amen. What a strong statement to make for a man that is a God man, a believing God that is so Satisfied with his walk in God, not fully satisfied as though he has arrived, but satisfied to the point where he can say, you can use me as an example. And I have to admit, I I very recently posted on Facebook, I guess Holy Spirit God was gearing me up for this message, where I said that, yes, exhortation, rebuke, and chastisement in love are a part of growth in discipleship. But honestly, come on now. How many of us blood washed, born again, sanctified, tongue speaking, saints of God can truly stand to be corrected? <laughs> come on now. Let, let alone exhorted, rebuked, and chastised. That, that's probably how Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church became first, second, and the greater Ebenezer Church when folks got church discipline. You know what happened. They got mad, offended, and left their church to start their own. (laughs) Yes, we love Jesus. Yes, we're born again. But sometimes our egos, pride, and reputations will prevent many of us from reaching the much-needed spiritual maturity that Holy Spirit God and God's Holy Word is attempting to take us to. So what exactly does Apostle Paul mean when he says, therefore I urge you to imitate me? Well, Beloved, we got to go back to 1 Corinthians 4 and 12 where he says, we work hard with our hands. When we're cursed, we bless. When we're persecuted, we endure it. When we're slandered, we answer kindly. We have become the scum of the earth, Apostle Paul says, the garbage of the world right up to this moment. Now, Paul says that we abide in this message that our Lord Jesus gave us on Sermon on the Mount with the Sermon of the Beatitudes. Now, these are not just flowery words that we speak to sound sympathetically holy, but we demonstrate the characteristics of Almighty God who made us. He's saying that he, talking about God and Paul, Put him on display, being almighty God. When we carry the characteristics that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, gave us on the Sermon on the Mount and throughout the gospel account records of our Lord Jesus Christ's life and ministry, we are embodying that same person in our lives, the way he walked, the way he talked, the way he carried himself, the way he did so many oppositional things to what is customary that, you know, as human beings in our carnal mind, we normally do. You cuss me, I'm going to cuss you back. You swing at me, I'm going to swing back. You try to stab me in the back, I'm going to dig a hole in the ditch for you to push you in. I'm going to set you up before you set me up. But Jesus is saying, all that does is just magnify more evil upon evil. 
He's saying that the ways that he's showing us has a way of transforming all of that evil, negative, dark energy into light. So we are to be light that exposes those dark areas, places, and people that come into our lives so that we can introduce God to them, which is a much better alternative. Y'all know that's the truth, too. Give me some good spiritual motivation right here on Fire the Gospel Experience. But, hey, <laughs> it's up to us. We got to wake up. Come on, Ernest J. Lee, my homeboy from Detroit, Romulus. It's all good. We just need to wake up. Ain't that right, Brother Ernest J. Lee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. David Penn. Let's go. Let's go. The struggle brought from over We got people dying We lost so many soldiers So much blood in the streets It's falling over But we gotta make a change And bring that closure Wake up, wake up, my city Wake up, rise up You really think you think and quit? I'm talking Titanic. We all on that sinking ship. Going home where your court's gon' sit. Now it's too late, you out of here quick. Four by four behind them bricks. Five wide, no picky fit. My offense is the defense, and I ain't got no time. Pay attention, watch some signs. So misguided, must be blind. My heart a pump, no Kool Aid. I must be free, I can't be a slave. I'm staying strong, I can't be afraid. No, your history is history. Can. Everybody wake up to struggle the problem over We got people dying, we lost so many souls So much blood in the streets, it's falling over But we gotta make the change and bring that closure Wake up, wake up, my city Wake up, rise up, get up, do something, speak up We don't wanna love another one to fight It's an epidemic affecting everybody. everybody. It's an epidemic. We didn't turn the city streets into a war zone. And every time you make it home, it's like a milestone. And when you go, you gotta take your strap. Even in church, we be trying to snap. But God ain't pleased, he's down with that. We're trying to live in peace, put down your gas. We on five, we all trying to live. Head to the sky, we look to the hills. And while you out there, turn it up, saying God's will. Everybody wake up, go across the road. Together's like winning a lottery, chance is slim, we pass is big, brainwashing is the cash they spend, is not trying to help the community anyway, I'm gonna try to teach these kids a better way, time to change, run the nation, get up and get you an education, cause living in poverty is not where I'm gonna be, that's why I'm taking a stand to stay strong, this economy gonna make monopoly, you gotta invest, trust God to stay strong, before they turn this earth to napalm, I'm gonna take what's mine and then some, they ain't gonna stop my income, wake up people and grace is answer. Everybody brings up the struggle to cross them over We got people dying, we lost so many souls So much blood in the streets, it's falling over But we gotta make the change and bring that closure Wake up, wake up, my city Wake up, rise up, get up, get up, do something, speak up We don't want to lose another one to fight Hello, I am Lady Rochelle. You are listening to Fire, the gospel experience with my brother Ron E. Jefferson, where the fire is a moving, uplifting, and unrestrained experience of biblical inspiration and gospel music. I pray that my ministry warriors talk would uplift your spirit and give you new strength. And for more inspiration, you can tune in to Warriors Talk on urbanbroadcastmedia.com every Monday at 7 p.m., Central Standard Time. Keep it tuned in and bless your family, friends, and coworkers by telling them about fire on this station. Remember, it's all about kingdom building. 
Come on now, somebody. Lift those hands in the air. Let's bless our God, the one who walked and is. Keep 
my mind right Trying to keep my spirit in line But I gotta pay my bills And I need my body healed Trouble at home, trouble at work Even had trouble when I came to church So God, what I decided to do Was give my problems all over to you There ain't nothing you can't solve I don't even know why I got involved So maybe you better move There's something that I got It's just that unusual praise that I just can't help myself. My toes get to tapping, hands get to clapping, I get to bob in my head. Oh, I see I'm not the only one. I see y'all out there. I feel you out there getting your unusual praise on. Sounds of woman of God, Washika Jefferson Burrell. I think that's my blood, Jefferson. That might be one of my kinfolk singing that song. And before that, getting that gospel groove on, we heard from Charles Slayer letting you know that I made it. Thank you, Lady Rochelle Dotson. Matheny, for uh, coming in and supporting this Fire Gospel Experience Radio. You all need to go ahead and support that woman of God's ministry. She is doing a work. She has a tremendous testimony. Lady Rochelle Dotson Matheny talking about what she went through as a cancer survivor, and now she has a ministry in that area where she is bringing on people that have gone through successfully some of the very same things that she had to go through and have come out with a wonderful, bright and shiny testimony about the healing power of our God. Won't he do it? You know he will. Amen. Can't fake that. You can only imitate it. We are embracing the word of God coming from 1 Corinthians verse 4, and we are concentrating our thought and focus on 
Verse 16, when Apostle Paul says, look, I urge you, this is what I want you to do. I urge you to imitate me. Amen. Can, can, can we make that same claim? Uh, are we blessed enough in our walk with the Lord Jesus to be able to say, I am doing the very best I can to the best of my ability as God lead and guide me? Can I humbly say through the demonstration of the life that I'm living that you all can imitate me? Amen. I'm trying to get to that place. Lord, if you would just help us, we'll believe you and we'll put our trust in you. The word of God says, and being found in appearance as a man. We're talking about our Lord Jesus Christ because God Almighty is God. Listen, let me let me go back. Paul said that we abide in the message that our Lord Jesus gave us on the Sermon on the Mount with the Beatitudes Sermon. Because these are characteristics of who our God is, and he's Almighty God. He proved it. In Philippians 2 and 8, it says, And being found in appearance as a man, guess what he did? He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Almighty God, who is the creator of all things and everything, has a tender side that is just as powerful as his judgment. He has declared that he desires that no one should be lost. 1 Timothy 2 and 4 says, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. The truth is that there is no other Savior, that we cannot get to the Father unless we go through and to the Son, Lord Jesus Christ. That means humbling yourself with your proud self. Talking about me too now. Everybody. We need to just bow down our minds and accept the fact that this is a truth. This is a reality. I was talking to a man, young man last night where he said that the bo- things in the Bible didn't really happen. They're just allegories. I had to I had to hit the brakes, pump the brakes real hard, and jump in that conversation when they was having on blog talk. And I said, hold up, young man. I'm sorry, but I have to, to-, to- totally debunk that statement that you just made. You did a whole bunch of talk. It sounded real sophisticated and real smooth. Uh, but you uh, demonstrated what the Bible declares when it says that there are some of us that have a form of godliness, but we deny the power thereof. So it's really about us being humble just as our Lord God did. He demonstrated it. So Paul has to bring strong chastisement to the Corinthian believers and us also to stop being spiritually arrogant about who we are blessed to belong to talking about God through acceptance of our Lord Jesus to Christ to not be carried away with the spiritual gifts and callings that have been bestowed upon us, beloved. Have we forgotten that we were blessed with what we have to bring God glory and not our own? And then bless others with them as we have opportunities. Paul says, for who makes you different from anyone else in verse 7? What do you have that you did not receive? (laughs) And if you did receive it, why do you boast? As though you did not Amen Wow Thank you Paul Thank you for helping us to Stay Down here on the ground And not let our heads Our spiritual insight Knowledge Intuitiveness Spiritual gifts Inflate our minds And carry us away And we Become shipwrecked In our faith So We must continuously seek Holy God To keep us humble there can still be some of that carnal thinking that wants to take off and run without God's oversight and then do our own thing. (laughs) The Apostle Paul says in verse 8, already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. You have begun to reign and that without us. How I wish that you really had begun to reign. So that we also might reign with you. He's being very spiritually sarcastic here. For it seems to me that God has put us apostles on display at the end of the procession, like those condemned to die in the arena. We have been made a spectacle to the whole universe, to angels as well as to human beings. We are fools for Christ, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honored. We are dishonored. To this very hour, we go hungry 
and thirsty. We're in rags. We are brutally treated. We're homeless. Lord Jesus. I'm going to say this in close. What we fear, what we really fear, beloved, what we're afraid to when it comes to church discipline is the retaliation from others that may be wrong in some matter. So under the guise of some persuado peace, we stay quiet, even when Holy Spirit of God is leading us to speak correction in love. Yes, in love. Verse 14 says, I'm writing this not to shame you, but to warn you as my dear children, while still undergoing extreme persecution, like many of us would never even come close to. Apostle Paul brings the needed correction in concern, loving, care, and affection for the sake of a healthy body of believers. Amen. Because, listen, if I were headed toward a ditch and, and you saw me going in that direction, I would be more upset that you didn't have enough concern for me to speak up and warn me. You let me go in that ditch and you saw where I was going. And that's the heart of exhortation, rebuke, and chastisement in love that we are to imitate like the Apostle Paul and our Lord Jesus. And then listen, and never have to fake it because faking it is going to always come up short when someone's life, when someone's spiritual life is in jeopardy of some sort of pain or disruption or heartache because we have not appreciated the fact that, yes, I love you enough and I care enough about your spiritual walk and your relationship with God and other believers that I may have to tell you something that may be hard for you to digest. You may get upset with me, and you may not even like what I'm trying to say, but I pray that a seed be planted in your heart so somewhere in the stillness and the quiet time of your mind, as you personally reflect on where your life is going, where it could be headed, that Holy Spirit God will pull these words that we share to each other in exhortation, rebuke and chastisement, and realize that it was said in love. It was not said to tear down, but it was said to build up. Amen? Amen. Breaking it down. <laughs> Keeping it real right here on Father Gospel Experience. Giving you some transparency where we can actually grow together in love always in love as we all continue to grow in our Lord Jesus Christ as we walk in his very footsteps. Amen. But God, you got to help me. You got to help me together. Here's the Cardi Cortez on Fire the Gospel Experience talking about God help me together when I needed it the most. Cardi, tell your story. So many wonder how I survive. I can't say it was easy, but I'm still alive. God never left me. He stayed by my side. And I am so grateful he kept me alive. Struggle.
and by your grace, I'm still here. You held me together. God, you pulled me through. I'm so glad you're gracious. That's why I'm still I almost destroyed my whole life, but your uh, wouldn't let me go. Nobody but Jesus. Aren't you all just excited and happy and glad that God has been so patient and long suffering with us that He could have just got rid of us, just cast us to the side a long time ago uh, when we just seemed like we were just so determined to just do the exact opposite of what He wanted us to do. But thank God for that day when realization came into our lives and we realized that, man, not only was I going in the wrong direction, but I had the nerve to be going at a high rate of speed. Thank you, Father God, for pumping my brakes and helping a brother out like me. And I know I'm not just me, but I'm speaking for everybody that's listening to this broadcast. We can all extend a heartfelt sense of grace, mercy, and gratitude to our God for being so kind and patient as he continues to work with us and mold us. Listen, you all, I am just happy and excited to give each and every one of you blessed people of God that have a word of exhortation, encouragement, and inspiration for us so that we can continue to stand on this faith which we live. Word Up is that segment where I'm inviting each and every one of you to just be a part and share inspirations from God. You can get in touch with me on Facebook, Ryan E. Jefferson. If you want to be a special guest for this Word Up segment, Time for Inspiration and Encouragement, write down on Facebook, Ryan E. Jefferson. Or send me an email message to say, Brother Ryan, can you, can you schedule me and set me up to be uh, your special guest for Word Up, Ronald Jefferson 1 at AOL.com. Or try Ron E. Jefferson 60 at Gmail. I'm right there on Facebook Fire. You can send me a message or you can give me a call, 80-413-0220 is the number to call. And if I'm not there because the Lord has my plate full, but I promise you I'll get back with you if you leave me a message. My special guest for Word Up is a young lady, a woman of God that I am just really just becoming so encouraged by, by the things that she's doing. She's a gospel artist. I got some of her music. I'm going to be playing it out of the wonderful city of Memphis, Tennessee. She is founder and CEO of the Gospel Songwriters Conference Radio, and we're going to be talking about that. That is a wonderful new network that I am happy to say that I am collaborating with this young lady on this new gospel ministry network. They are playing this fire gospel experience, and it is certainly my pleasure to be a part of what God is doing I extend to each and every one of you to find your place in ministry, find your place in God, 
so that you can collaborate with wonderful people like this young lady that I'm about to introduce and be a fruitful vine and a fruitful blessing unto God. So without any further ado, Woman of God, Gospel Artist, CEO of Gospel Songwriters Conference Radio, Natalie Peaches is here on Fire, the Gospel Experience. Oh. Praise God the Lord, you. woman of God. Praise God the Lord. Got you, man of God. Finally got you up in here, Lord <laughs> Jesus. Thank you for joining us, woman of God. I'm happy and excited to have you here. You're doing great things for the Lord that we're going to talk about. But right now, I'm just waiting with great anticipation for you to bless each and every one of us with encouraging words that God himself has given you to deliver. Praise God. On today, on this segment, uh, given to us by uh, Brother Ronald E. Jefferson. We are so excited to be on his show today, Fire the Gospel Experience. I am Natalyn Piggy, pastor of Divine Love Ministries and CEO for the Gospel Songwriters Conference radio network, and organization. Today, I am asking all of you to take a look forward. We've been looking back, asking God to uh, give us back everything the way it was, make it normal, make it normal, put it back normal. God said he's going to do a new work in you. Why are you mm. looking for normal? Mm. In his word, he says, brand new mercies. The, the poet wrote in the prayer was, great is thy faithfulness unto me. Mm. Brand new mercies I see. Brand new. Come on. Why are we looking for normal? In his word, God says, I will do a new thing. And you, why are we trying to get back to normal? What is normal? You see, before Jesus came, normal was that if you were an adulterer, you could be pulled out and stoned to death. Normal mm. was if you took another person's ownings, if you took their cow, you could be killed. Normal mm. was if you were not a part of a certain nation of people, you were not to live among that nation of people. Normal was that on on a, a certain day, you would do a certain thing. Normal was women. Normal was that the men would go out and the men would receive all the respect. You didn't have a place. Normal used to be. <laughs> Let's oh, go back Jesus. to normal for a minute. We don't really want to experience what normal was, but then Jesus came. Ah, yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus came and all things that were normal went flat out the window. Here, why? First of all, here's a baby born not the normal way. Lord have mercy. Here is a mm. child being protected by God, sent out of the country where they were born, just barely over into another land. But God sent him there, why, to fulfill the prophecy of where Jesus would come from and where he had to go. That wasn't normal. Nothing Jesus ever stood for was normal. So why are we, quote unquote, in this world? What in the world? Why are we in this world trying to find our place in something that was never for us? People of God rise to the occasion. Yes, this is different. Yes, today is a little scary. Yes, our people are dying by the numbers. But did you wake up this morning? Did God start you on your way today? 
then you have one more day to get into this word to find the power of God that is on the inside of you to speak better than normal. There is no reason to look back. Churches, I'm talking to you in particular. We are sad that we can't get inside our sanctuaries. Some of us who are sad Christians haven't been inside the door in years. Where is your worship? Why have you not woke up this morning giving God your best praise, giving God your worship? Why have you not woke up this morning getting in the word of God, studying the word of God, seeing what he has for you to do from your house on today? We can't go back to normal. God has not ordained ever He made you, the Bible says, fearfully and wondrously. So where did you get this normal thing from? Another thing that is not normal. It is not normal for a human being that is only a human being to be able to die and live again. But wait a minute here. God made a realm in the bush just for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Woo! He didn't even stop with normal. He said that whosoever believeth on him. He said, I don't care if you got a earring in both ears and one in your toe and one in your nose. Whosoever believeth on him, pimp, prostitute, girl, boy, woman, man, whosoever believeth on him, whatever your culture is, I don't care where you are from, what your background is, your skin color does not matter. Whosoever believeth on him, would he mean those that have committed murder in a jail cell? Whosoever believeth on him. Him, Lord, have mercy. I know we're going through a lot, African Americans, but it does not stop with us. We have a world to pray for. Whosoever believeth on Jesus, anybody that acts a fool that can get it together to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I come to you, I bring you my fault. Every drug addict, every alcoholic, right now in the name of Jesus, anybody, no matter your lifestyle, your preference, whatever, God says he that comes through the name of his son, Jesus, that is not normal. What's going to (laughs) happen? Whosoever believeth on him shall not Perish. What on earth is normal about shall not perish? Not a thing. You're going to have a glorified body and live again in Christ. Shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm talking to those of you that are afraid of COVID-19 right now, that want things to go back to normal. There will be no normal. Get this in your head. Not only do we have COVID-19, we also have wars that are coming up like we've never seen before. Not only do we have wars that are coming up crazy, we also have the enemy at higher level. Get ready for the coming back of Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. Now, that is not normal, but oh, when we get to heaven. When we get to heaven, the psalmist wrote, when we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Now that will be the norm. You won't have to worry anymore. There will be no more child abuse. There will be no more murder. There will be no more 
foot on our necks. There will be no more uh, abuse. There will be no more drug addicts. There will be no more alcoholics. There will be no more sexual addiction. There will be no more hatred, no more murder, no more strife, no more jealousy, no more envy, no idol gods. Baby, the new normal will be to worship the Lord Jesus all of the time, to throw our crowns at his feet and say, Hosanna, 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 King of kings, Lord of lords. Lord, I love you, Lord, I worship. I heard somebody say they're going to tell them all about their troubles. I'm not going to even remember my troubles. The Bible, and yes, I do Lord. believe the Bible, says yes. that they worship the Lord. Amen. They who were brought over by Amen. the word of their testimony and the blood of mm-hmm. the Lamb. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I will not Hallelujah. have time to do anything but testify. When I see Brother Amen. Run in heaven, he's going to be busy yes. trying to outtell my testimony because he's going to be That's telling right. his. I'm not going to have time for troubles over there. The Bible oh. also says that in this great time when Jesus has returned, that God has promised to wipe what? Every tear. Mm. From our eyes, Amen. that pain and sorrow shall be no more. So guess what? I Amen. won't even remember all the evil that's been done. So you can start right now forgiving all the hurt that's going on. Amen. Give it all from you in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for that powerful, powerful, invigorating word, woman of God. Now, listen, we have a little bit of time left. Why don't you tell us about this new network that God has blessed you with, Gospel Songwriters Conference Radio. What is that all about, woman of God? Amen. The Gospel Songwriters Conference Radio, which is known by its initials, and you can get us direct through your search bar, uh, on any internet, anywhere where there is internet, you can get us simply by putting in the initials G S W C Radio dot com. Put it in as one word. Don't let the computer confuse you because it will right. separate it. And you know what you'll get, Ron? Golden State Warriors. I can't outdo Golden oh, State Warriors. No. <laughs> oh, no. But it is gswcradio.com. One word, put it together. It was formed um, a little over a year ago. We are a year old this past March, and we praise God for that. The network was born out of a need to be able to present the artists who are members of, have been delegates to the Gospel Songwriters Conference which has been held the past four years in Memphis, Tennessee. The Gospel Songwriters Conference is an idea uh, that was born by um, my attending the Lucy E. Campbell Workshop of the National Baptist Congress some years ago, Ron. It was not started immediately. It was uh, quite a few years ago as I sat in the class of Dr. Daryl Gates who mentioned some things. That's a long story. I'll have to tell you on another occasion. But one of the things he said settled in my spirit. And for years, it would just lay there until God would uh, come up with the Gospel Songwriters Conference, a place where musicians could come together whom God has gifted, but haven't been able to uh, even find the first step to getting their music done or recorded or or know what to do to get it to the level of being presented to great places such as the Lucy Campbell Workshop or the uh, uh, National GMWA. How do I get my music done? What do I need to do? Where do I start? How do I get into a production studio? What's marketing? All of that was part of the concept and the groundwork of the Gospel Songwriters Conference. Uh, when we had gone far enough, the Lord gave us several songwriters 
who have done phenomenal music and still we needed a place to present their music. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Anthony Young of I Am Big T Network who got us started by giving us a one-hour show. He's in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. I'm sorry, I told that wrong. He is in New Orleans, Louisiana. His network goes uh, everywhere as well. So we did an hour show called the Gospel Songwriters Conference Radio Show for a year. Then the Lord led us through Anthony Young uh, to go ahead and establish our own GSWC Radio Network and to be able to help others. Now we service uh, many wonderful artists such as your guest on the show today, Mr. Pickney. Uh, we, uh, and he has wonderful rap music. Uh, we serve uh, those in every field from the children's literature to the traditional gospel, to rap music, to hip-hop, um, solo artists. And what you're going to find on gswcradio.com is a different sound because uh, we had not incorporated all of the mainstream artists. The Lord has now given us a way to do that as well through the Nina Taylor shows. But as far as all of the artists that are looking for a place to, to launch their music, we invite them. We invite the artists uh, that you have run, the artists that have been on your show, because I love your show. And by the way, thank you for allowing GSWCRadio.com to be one of the stations that presents your syndicated show, Fire the Gospel Experience. So we also incorporate that as as well as ministries um, uh, of other podcasts that are important to God. Mm -hmm. So we have the whole gamut, but it's at a different level. And the songs that that you're going to hear at GSWC are from writers who know that God has given them something great and just don't have the backing of mainstream, but their work is just as anointed. Why? Because God gave it to them. Amen. And they put Amen. the labor in. They have certainly Amen. done the groundwork. It's good stuff. Yes, yes. And, and my prayer is is that when they do reach that level of success, if it's God's will that they're striving for, that they don't forget where they came from. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Because sometimes we'll get blessed and then we'll get spiritual amnesia, acting like I didn't, uh, I don't know them folks. I, I ain't got nothing to do with them. And I, I'm just going on in Jesus' name. Well, Jesus wants us to be able to strengthen our brothers. He wants us to be able to pull our sisters along with us as he blesses us. Listen, I am, I'm so grateful that you were here to join me and let us know about this wonderful new gospel network. Gospel Song Writers Conference, GSWC Radio. I know that it's going to be blessed, and I'm looking forward to a long and lengthy and blessed by God collaboration with you, my dear sister Natalie Pages. You are a wonderful working sister in God Christ. Bless you. And, don't, and, and, and don't you know we're going to be playing some of your music too? We ain't going to leave you <laughs> out. You, 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 act, you acting like you're not a gospel artist too. I know you wear many hats and everything, but listen. We're going to bless you, and as, as, as long as you keep sending music, whether it's music that you sing or whoever you sing, you already know. You got my full support right here for Airplay on Fire the Gospel Experience. I ain't going to hold y'all back for nothing in the world. I'm hanging right there with y'all until the Lord say something Thank different. You. God bless you. Brother Ron Jefferson, I want you to know that I have done this segment on my Go Live feed, and uh, the audience is here, and they've been watching and and wishing you well. So uh, thank you so much for being there. Amen. We do appreciate you and all that you bring to the table. I love your testimony. And one day, I hope you'll just share with the world uh, what God has done for you. We will get you back. On GSWCRadio.com. Girl, don't you make me start crying on this radio show. I'll cry happy tears all over this studio. You better stop playing with me. God is good. Yes, I'm a blessed yes, child of God. I, I tell yes, anybody sir. that, and I won't change. You know how some Amen. people save and then they try to calm themselves down and dilute themselves? Not me. 
I ain't got time for that. Because you know something. That's right. Story, that God has brought me from way too far from where I was, and I was stuck on stupid. I wish I would. Shame God try to act like I ain't a blessed child of God. And I'm going to give him all the praise. He's going to get all the glory every day until he comes get me or else it's my time for y'all to lay me down in the ground. Either way it goes, I am with Jesus 100% all the way. And I thank you for allowing me to serve with you. It's my privilege. It's my honor. It's my uh, just blessed to be with you all. I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. And God is going to bless the work of our hands. I just believe that. Thank you for joining me, one woman of God. You are a powerful woman of God. God I love you, Jesus. Ain't, that, ain't nothing you can do Amen. about it. You might as well just love me back. You might as well pray for me back. I'm going to keep praying for y'all anyway. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my dear. Bless you, Jesus. God bless you. <laughs> That's all I'm talking about. Yeah, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I promise you, these people of God, they know how to get a brother started because I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He saved me. He blessed my stumbling feet. He pulled me out of the miry clay and set me on a rock to stay, and that rock is Jesus. Here's my special guest, singing gospel music, woman of God, CEO of Gospel Songwriters Conference Radio, GSWC Radio. Woman of God, Natalie Peaches, just for me. Come on, woman of God, sing that song. He died just for me and you too.
Hello, I am Prophetess Mia Gatson Mason, and you are listening to Fire, the gospel experience where the fire is a moving, uplifting, unrestrained experience of biblical inspiration and gospel music. I pray that my ministry, Raw Ministries at 2659 Pike Avenue, North Little Rock, Arkansas, will uplift your spirit and give you new strength. Keep it tuned in and bless your family and friends and co-workers by telling them about fire on this station. It's all about kingdom building.
fire the gospel experience let you know that if no one else comes through for you our lord jesus is right there waiting willing and able to come through just for you here's woman of god Marsha lee he comes through because he shed his precious blood hallelujah thank you
Go on and clap your hands. I see you bobbing your head. I see you got your eyes closed. Sounds of Skylar Patterson right here on Fire the Gospel Experience. Let you know, hey, 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 Lord God, we just want you to just stay with me. Got to send out some birthday shouts out to woman of God, Bernice Gregory. Happy birthday, happy and blessed birthday, woman of God. I pray God gives you many, many more. And I'm sure as you celebrate another year of life and being blessed by God, you can certainly say, woman of God, gospel artist Bernice Gregory, that he has been good. Come on now. You know you can say it. Go and sing it. That's even better. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with Jesus joy, it gives me great pleasure to introduce my wife to you, the Honorable Bernice Brown Gregory. As she sings, God is good. He has been good, so good to me. He kept me from danger, seen and unseen, and brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light.
He has been great. And guess what? He's even been better than all of that. Thousands of gospel artists celebrate that birthday. Woman of God, Bernice Gregory, was in the house doing her thing. She just got happy right there at the end. I love it. I promise you I do. Thank each and every one of y'all for joining me on another spiritual journey that inspired the gospel experience. Y'all be blessed in the Lord Jesus Christ. In every good thing, I pray you be blessed. That your hands will find good work to plow fields of faith into the souls of the people that come your way. Be a light in shining darkness. Amen. I pray God you to the fullest. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Keep listening to this broadcast. I'm on Spreaker.com. You go to my Facebook page and get that long link. I'm not even going to try to spell it out because I'll mess it up and then you'll mess it up and then you'll be lost somewhere. But listen, just go to my fire Facebook page. Go to my Facebook page, Ronnie e. Jefferson. Get the link. You can listen to me on Spreaker.com. Thank you. Natalie Peaches for coming in with strong exhortation and word of encouragement on Word Up. And thank you for syndicating this Fire Gospel Experience broadcast on GSWC Radio, Gospel Songwriters Conference. Amen. I am blessed to be a servant of the Most High God, and it's my pleasure to serve with each and every one of you blessed children of God. So until next time, y'all be blessed in the Lord Jesus. I'm going to leave y'all with spiritual pieces, letting you know we're going to get our praise on as we leave here. So until next time, y'all be blessed in the name of Jesus. church stuff, y'all. I told yeah, you that. Yeah. Me. I know I'll you. I'll never let you down. I'm... Trust me. It's most definitely a party. All right, man. I'm turning around. Right here. Out. Later. Church stuff. I told you. I with that church stuff. Party at the church. Who heard of a party at the church?
Yeah.